Good afternoon. It is May 22nd, I believe. I don't know. It's Sunday. Um, back up here in a remote location. Um, doing some finishing touches on the remote power plant. This is for a friend who plans to build basically right where I'm standing and uh, that's going to be the power source for any tools that need to be used and then uh, also the well pump and when there is a house here or a cabin that will be the power source for the cabin um, so let's get a little closer I'm, I'm hoping I'm blocking out the wind here I'm standing in the woods actually <laughs> and uh, I'll get to work and show you show you what I got going on okay here we are Solar is currently producing 167 watts, so that means batteries have already completed their boost cycle, uh, where they get up to peak voltage and they stay there. Um, this one's set for 60 minutes. Um, some of them go for 120 minutes. Um, this is th this system these batteries have all been basically sitting here idle there's a 65 watt it's actually the Ford uh, the inverter is using 40 watts just uh, being on so it's a 25 watt light that's just been on basically all winter long uh, using something and uh, during the cold months we have an in-floor heat Underneath the foam, I've got a heating coil similar to it's in my chicken coop. Um, this one's a little larger. It's a heated blanket. And I rolled it up, you know, folded it up and put the foam on top of that. And that just keeps the floor from getting, you know, hard frozen because uh, it gets really windy and really cold up in this location. Um, so it just keeps the hard freeze off of the batteries uh, it only uses probably 30 watts um, charge controller for the wind wind is not whipping too hard currently making 10 watts it was just see she slowed down she was just up over 100 i should have showed you that first it'll pick up again no worries um and then we got a diversion load controller from Thermodyne, um, it's the G5 controller uh, with the mechanical relay that is going to be replaced with the solid state 100 amp relay. Um, current diversion load is uh, three, uh, what are they, one ohm, 100 watt ceramic resistors, and they're in a series. Um, I'm going to do something different. I, I'm going to put together, oh, there we go, just zoomed up a little bit, 50, I was just at 70 again. It was actually really, really mild wind for this location, but anyways, um, this was generating really a lot of heat. I think it was too much juice going to these resistors. Um, and it wasn't dipping the power fast enough, so they were staying on for you know good amount of time while uh, while the solar is in the 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 boost cycle. If the wind turbine basically blows at all, which it almost never stops, um, then it was kicking on the diversion controller and uh, warming up the resistors. We started to generate some heat here right on the relay uh, where the plastic insulator started to melt and we didn't have a replacement so I just you know I made sure it wasn't arcing kind of spaced it back and then uh, put liquid electrical tape you know in there a couple of coats so you know mechanically it's still working um, but we're gonna go ahead and just replace this uh, the SSR won't have those same issues because it's got a big heat sink on it. Um, so, and, and 
ratings wise the new diversion load is this guy hard to see with the glare but uh, I took the tail fan off of my 800 watt turbine and made a new one a long ways back I had this laying around seemed like a cool thing to mount some resistors on so these are 10 ohm uh, 200 watt resistors <clears throat> in parallel so uh, you know where you where you series your resistors or you series your load your uh, upping your resistance but I'm really only bringing it up to 3 ohms and your load stays the same um, here I have 10 ohm resistors and I'm paralleling them. My resistance stays the same, but my load gets tripled. Um, so this is 600 watts of resistance to prevent the turbine from spiking the voltage in the middle of the day when, you know, the sun's out. Um, turbine's more here for nighttime power, you know, when they have a cabin set up here and they're using power they got fridges and stuff lights plugged in tvs who knows laptops um that's you know wind is supplement supplemental power you know unless we were to put a wind farm up here but uh, the thing with wind is it's hard to control um fortunately the charge controllers uh, technology is caught up and you know it's not like the old ones where they just uh ground out all three phases and fry the stator in the turbine these new ones they do what's called a soft braking so one phase at a time they you know intermittently uh they don't bring it to a stop they just slow it down so um it's a lot a lot safer it's not going to wreck the turbine and finally there's a charge controller that can actually you know do its job um, and these are mppt charge controllers so even at very low rpm uh, basically if it's spinning at all uh, it's generating something um, and right now it doesn't need to generate so it's uh, you know it's not trying to because the batteries are full but I brought a uh, space heater I believe what does this guy use 900 on low and 15 yep 1500 watts on high i'm gonna burn some power maybe i'll kick on the well run some water out of that um so uh and we'll notice almost instantly that the uh, charge controllers will open up and allow some power to come in again so uh i'm gonna get to work i'm gonna plug the this guy in and start swapping the stuff out real quick and I'll check back uh, probably in 30 minutes all right okay so I got the space heater hooked up around the side I don't want it it's already 80 degrees I don't want it blowing heat on me but we are now using that's pretty accurate almost exactly 900 watts um, and like magic, look at that, oh, oh, it's testing, we were making 930 watts, it'll dip the voltage real quick, just to see how fast, uh, it drops, it'll, it'll dip the incoming power, to see how fast the voltage drops, to see if it still needs it, because it knows it was already in boost mode today, but, you know, it's slowly allowing more in, making sure the voltage isn't climbing these are really really smart chargers you know um, and coincidentally the wind picked up 120 she was just over 300 sorry i'm shaking i'm leaning all the way over all this this is never supposed to be a, a shelter for people just for this stuff but you know, like magic, boom, we're making power. Um, oh, she's up to eight. 
and it's about one in the afternoon, so we're still pretty close to full sun. Yep, 950 or 940, back down to 650. It's still testing. It's not sure if it can let full power in yet. Yep, 955. <laughs> and this is a uh, 10 100 watt new power panels wired in uh, a series parallel. There's five in series and five in series and then they're paralleled in. So input voltage is 78 volts. This will take up to 150 volts. Um, but if I would have wired all 10 in series, my input voltage would have been too high. Um, only by a couple, but it would have still been too high. And uh, it would not let any power at all in. This maximizes incoming amperage and then never uh, overheats the charge controller. So, um, all right, time to get to work. Uh, I got our old dump load off new ones going on rewired and then I'm putting in uh, an AB switch for the diversion load um, and we'll we'll slide all these batteries when I'm all done with everything um, I'm gonna it's gonna take one hell of a push but I'm gonna slide all these in as tight to the component wall as I can I got a, got a bit of room there yet um, and that'll leave room for four 12 volt batteries. Uh, the owner of this system wants to do something productive other than just, you know, warm up resistors with uh, the excess energy. Um, so we'll be able to, you know, uh, if he wants to go get a couple, you know, scrap 12 volt car batteries, we can line them up all here, uh, series them up to 48 volts, wire it to the diversion relay and he'll be able to select you know load two and that'll divert the power to the old batteries and with a, a pulsating voltage from the excess power uh, it will slowly and very thoroughly actually rehab old batteries um, you know as long as they got new fluid and Stuff like that, it'll bring them back to life. I've done that uh, as, a, as a diversion load and it worked good. Um, so, and then when the old batteries are rehabbed in full, you know, obviously they're not going to work as a diversion load anymore because they're not going to draw any amps away from uh, the primary batteries. So, when they're full and you know, back to life, uh, we can switch it back to. Resistor bank, and you know, then he can put those batteries to use, you know, in uh, whatever tractors, cars, sell them, and go get four more, and continue on and on and on. Or you could just pile up rehab batteries for someday when uh, this is going to be used on a daily. So, okay, time to get to work. Okay, well, I'm done for the day. Um, had some bad news. Turns out the solid state relay, uh, the relay control can only handle up to 32 volts DC. The output can handle up to 220 volts DC. Um, that was not clearly exp explained on the sales page and that's not going to do the trick. Um, since I had the heat sink already mounted, I put the mechanical relay back on that upon further testing. It is uh, the relay is functioning, you can hear it clicking, but it's not engaging, so the, the terminals internally, uh, it's not applying any power to the dump load selector 
or you know the resistors when set for the resistors um, so that'll have to be replaced uh, I'm gonna see if I can find the correct solid state relay uh, in the meantime I do have an extra one of those at home I really should have brought it um, whoops so um, that's not doing anything right now um, which is unfortunate but it will be an easy swap it's just a couple of screws both sides and I think the heat sink is going to help even if I just replace this with another mechanical um, this might have just been a dud from the factory because usually these are pretty uh, hardy pieces of equipment um, but again up here there's a lot of power generated and it, it it's going to see use so so anyhow got my selector here's the power from the diversion relay and you can set it to load one or load two or off um, you know. and then uh, two is this guy it comes to there and then I made room for four more 12 volt batteries hopefully should fit in here I don't know there's there's a little bit of room to scoot these back uh, a couple of more inches if a guy needs it um, but basically that system this goes up to the bus bars to the ground this would come down here you know let's just say there's a battery here so you would have your positive negative to positive negative to positive and your negative and that would make 48 volts um, <clears throat> and charge all four 12 volt batteries when disconnected uh, would be full uh, and it'll balance it across all four the current goes through them all evenly and uh, yeah, that returns up to the bus bar so you know when we get a new relay that'll be a really cool feature and this uh, resistor bank turned out really neat and that uh, when not charging batteries is going to work a heck of a lot better um, it's a 600 watt turbine sun is right there so I'm trying not to get a glare um, and it makes all of that uh, when 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 the wind is whipping up here uh, she she chucks power so the resistor load will be able to dip out the full potential of the turbine um, which usually you rate your uh, diversion load for two-thirds of it but like I said this system basically sits idle uh, and will continue to sit idle until uh, some lumber is ordered and construction begins you know which at that point uh, it'll it'll be under rigorous use and the inverter will be able to take it uh, for those who haven't seen prior videos on this setup I'll go back through the whole thing one more time since the wind isn't terrible I'm gonna oops toolbox Come around so 10 100 watt new power panels and the rack is built on a pivot it's centered so it's real easy to adjust it there's two big construction screws in each side of the hinged lever that adjusts your panel height right now I, I, I just set it today for summer uh, angle winter these two very same screws just get moved down to there same on the other side and it drops her down to like so because the Sun rides so much lower in the sky right here you know she rides almost right above it you know we are in Wisconsin so 
we don't, uh, you know, there's still a shadow at noon. So it's uh, a little bit south. But uh, six volt batteries, uh, four Trojan. What are these bad boys? 305 amp hour batteries and then four Duracell 215 amp hour batteries so you average that it's that's it's about 260 amp hours 270 amp hours uh which i think at 48 volts oh comes to something like a 12 kilowatt hour bank um which is plenty uh for for what it's going to be used for initially um and when this is on full-time duty we can always add double up the battery bank basically um it was a uh, kind of an afterthought to go with 48 volt we were originally going to do uh <clears throat> 24 and when we we had ordered the, the the first set of batteries and then we ordered the inverter and you know decided last minute to go 48 volts just because uh that uh 48 volts on the dc side is just so much more efficient there's virtually zero voltage drop through the wire and there's less amperage so the whole thing is safer there's there's less chance that anything can heat up um and and, and burn uh except for moving parts unfortunately that was didn't see that coming but uh charge controller it's an apiver mppt multi-port multi-point power tracking uh solar charge controller it's a 100 amp controller that'll take up to 5000 watts i believe mm. At 48 volts, 12, it'll do 1,250 watts, 24 volts, it'll do 2,500 watts, 36 volts, it'll do 3,750 watts. Um, so, being a 48 volt system, we've only got one-fifth of the potential power that that thing can run. This is built for the turbine 600 watt turbine 600 watt charge controllers they're, they're designed for each other they're a package deal um, inverter is a 4000 watt split phase so it uh, has two separate legs uh, 120 volts each or you can uh, hook up both together and you've got your 240 volts um, inside here we just ran a small outlet and then uh, over by the well pump I'll show that real briefly um, I set up another outlet over there off of the separate leg and then um, also 240 volt for the well pump there's an old deep well pump um, we've got 48 volt to 12 volt step down and that runs a little light and uh, just some cigarette outlets for phone chargers, whatever, various 12 volt uh, appliances and then that also runs the heated floor which is also 12 volt. So for the wind turbine I whipped together a three-phase switch, so an upward position, it grounds out all three phases and breaks it. That's basically only for raising and lowering, just like that. It's freewheeling, there's, it's just open current, and in the downward position, it applies power to the controller. Um, it's basically it inside here so I'll uh, go show you the well pump quick okay so here is the other outlet just ran to a stand with a outdoor box it's got uh, fuses for the 120 volt it's also got a 
30 amp out and this is a uh, 50 amp 240 volt out and that is run the old well pump three quarter horse And we'll just flip that on quick. Ta-da! And there's water. Before this power system, this well hasn't run in a long, long time. And it makes a uh, pretty darn nice pressure. I imagine that is uh, some crystal clear, very, very, very clean water. I should maybe bottle up some of that before I go. But, uh... So that was the main purpose for this system was uh, to be able to run that, um, and we built it to do more. This will this will run a whole house uh, when this gets cleared. There'll be a cabin just about right here. Actually, I was thinking you might want to have uh, the building right over the well so it might be cornered out right here and then that panel uh, would run power right into the house and then get distributed from there um and we could also run both phases in so we would have 240 in the house also so so there's that some gorgeous gorgeous country here good mix of everything See some ash, some oak, some hard maple, some soft maple. Looks like there's a fruit tree way down in the corner there. Nice open field. And there's a the power station. So, you gotta replace the relay yet, but other than that, the sucker's done. She's dialed in ready to rock it's, it's just sitting here waiting ready to be used so god bless you and thanks for watching